All right, welcome back to Morning Express. Focus now is on your health. And this morning, we have in studio Dr. Pamela Olet, who is the CEO of the Kenya Sese and Trypanosomiasis Eradication Council. Many thanks for joining us in studio, doctor. All right, perhaps let's begin with uh, this council, the Kenya Sese and Trypanosomiasis Eradication Council. Uh, I, I understand it's a government uh, project. When did this begin? Yeah, Kentek, which is the Kenya Sese and Trypanosomiasis Eradication Council mm -hmm. was established in 2012 mm -hmm. before these activities were carried within the government departments mm -hmm. of veterinary services. Right. Yes. All right, so you deal with the eradication of sesa flies. Why is this important? Sesa flies, as is known worldwide, is a poverty insect mm -hmm. because it is a major cause of poverty in Africa All right. in many ways. An African household without livestock is considered very poor. Mm -hmm. And most parts of Sub-Saharan Africa, sesame fly is the major cause of devoid households without animals. Mm -hmm. Because uh, sesame flies, they cause abortion. Sesame flies kill livestock. Mm -hmm. Sesame flies make those areas without uh, bulls not plow land. Right because they can clear all the bulls in an area. Mm -hmm. And this means it directly affects crop agriculture. Mm -hmm. Sesaflies infect human beings. That is why it is called sleeping sickness. Mm -hmm. Sesaflies also affect wildlife. In fact, in the, the areas where you find sesaflies the most is national parks. Mm -hmm. Sesaflies Sometimes we do not know, but sometimes tourists pick this disease from our parks. Notorious is the Serengeti Mara area. Mm -hmm. Many times we have to deal with travel adversaries mm -hmm. from these uh, tourist countries, when we find countries telling their people not to visit this area because they will pick uh, sleeping sickness. Right. But most of the time we don't blow it out because it is counterproductive. Mm -hmm. When people start hearing that, they will pick sleeping sickness, start reading it in the papers, they will not come. So we deal with it silently. And right. the, uh, the biggest problem we have is the tourists sometimes do not know whether they have picked it from the other side in Serengeti uh -huh. or they have picked it in the Mara area, which is on our side. Uh -huh. So it requires a lot of tra transboundary approach. Right. I mean, let's, let's demystify this sleeping sickness because it doesn't sound so bad. What's so bad about I mean, many people, I'm sure, would wish to sleep more. Uh, so what are the symptoms of sleeping sickness and why is it such a bad thing? Well, what we are calling sleeping sickness is actually a road to, to, to do death. Uh -huh. Because the nervous systems are already breaking down. When you start sleeping, spoons fall from your hands, food falls from your mouth, you are actually dying. Uh -huh. And when it has reached that stage, sometimes you may not be assisted. Right. Uh, the most uh, sad part of it is that the diagnosis of the disease is, is still a big, big challenge. Mm -hmm. Big challenge uh, to the member states, to the international partners like uh, World Health Organization, but they are working together uh, to get a solution. Mm -hmm. But before that is reached, we have to embark on the vector, because that is the only solution we have. Mm -hmm. There are lots of technologies now available to, to combat on, it. Yeah, right. to combat but who, the, who, the, who is at risk of uh, uh, getting sleeping sickness? Now, when we speak about Kenya, uh, the Western Belt mm -hmm. around Lake Victoria, all the uh, East African countries around the Lake Victoria Basin mm -hmm. are endemic areas, and of course, Mara is now included. Mm -hmm. And uh, this requires actually a regional approach because uh, the, the most efficient species for transmitting this disease is actually riverine species. Mm -hmm. It lives along the water shores of Lake Victoria and the rivers, mm -hmm. where we are exposing about 11 million people right. to right. this risk. To the disease. And, yes, and so but, but any, any type of fly can transmit, but uh -huh. that's the most endemic area. All right, because that, that was my next question. How is it spread from one person to another? 
Well, uh, the, the sassafras uh, carry the trypanosome. Uh, mm -hmm. It is the trypanosome that when the sassafly bites you, it will leave the trypanosome in you. Mm -hmm. And you know these flies are also feeding on the wild animals. They are feeding on livestock. Mm -hmm. And uh, they pick the disease from the, the wildlife, come to the domestic animals, come to you. The cycle is complete. So it's maintained in that, in, 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 in that, in that cycle. Mm -hmm. So yeah. unless you break the transmission, which now that is what the treatment of animals does, that is what the spraying of uh, livestock does to stop the transmission mm -hmm. so that at the end, actually, the trypanosome is eliminated from the environment. Mm -hmm. Actually, in some areas like Western Kenya, Buzia, some of the indications that the communities are sensitized on is when they start seeing dogs going blind. Mm -hmm. That means the, the human infective trypanosome is circulating in the in the animals, right. and including the domestic All right. animals. So, I mean, this is, this is rather alarming. So before we get to what Kentech has done and the gains it has made, let's talk about the impact on animals. You're talking about dogs going blind. So it's, in humans, it is sleeping sickness. And so what is the impact on animals? On animals, it is called Nagana. Mm -hmm. It's uh, still trypanosomiasis. Mm -hmm. So Nagana, once an animal is infected, actually, the, the health of that animal goes down mm -hmm. and eventually can cause fatality. Right. These animals that are infected, if they are pregnant, they are bought. Their production in milk goes down. Actually, it is estimated that uh, the, the, the animal resource loss because of trypanosomiasis goes from 20 to 50 billion mm -hmm. Kenya shillings yearly. Wow. If, if we don't even uh, uh, cost the impact on direct crop, agriculture, mm -hmm. where we have people who are unable to plow simply because they don't have the animals to plow. Mm -hmm. How many tractors do we have in these counties? Right. There could be just two in the entire county. Okay. So people still rely on oxen power mm -hmm. to open up land for crop agriculture. Okay. And we have somebody here asking for a clarification as to whether Nagana is the same as East Coast fever. No, these are two different, different things. Yes. All right. Yeah. All right. And so uh, for humans, for example, how does one tell they have sleeping sickness? Are there early stages? Are there symptoms? We tell that is the biggest challenge mm -hmm. we have now. Because of uh, the high surveillance we have had along our borders, it has come to a point that even sometimes our own doctors confuse malaria for sleeping sickness. For sleeping sickness. Uh -huh. has, that is why WHO is coming in to improve this case so that diagnosis can be correct so mm -hmm. that we treat the correct disease. Even uh, the people who are affected, sometimes they just go to the hospitals thinking they have malaria. Mm -hmm. And it's not malaria. Right. So, I mean, so it's, it's soon, a big challenge. How soon then after infection do the symptoms start to show? Or for the humans? Yes. For the humans, uh, I, I would not want to, to go to those specifics mm -hmm. because uh, the reaction sometimes is different and depends on the, the body challenge of the, the human air uh -huh. of the person. Uh -huh. And I would have wished maybe I come with our medical uh, doctor, to yeah, the, uh, the experts. Yeah, because the next question this. would be, after infection, what yes, yes. is the proper method of treatment? And that is where the problem is, because uh -huh. at the moment, there is nothing that you will call... Treatment. Call proper treatment. Uh -huh. Actually, when the drugs that are being used now are donated by some of the manufacturers in the uh -huh. international world because the drugs are so expensive to be afforded by the, the African member states. Mm -hmm. And remember, this is just an African problem. It's not a worldwide problem. It's not a worldwide problem. Yeah, and this is why, actually, it is neglected because unless the Africans themselves come out, actually, to get this thing out of Africa, mm -hmm. and this is why the African Union is coming in to sensitize the member states that... This is a primitive disease that should not exist mm -hmm. in this world, right. In, right? in Africa. It, 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 that's rather interesting because does that then mean that uh, this uh, trypanosomiasis is a death sentence? Because once infected, there's no treatment and you say it can easily lead to death. Yes, it, it leads to death. Mm -hmm. It is a very, very bad disease that we should not have 
around in this continent. Uh -huh. And a decision has been made by the African Union that it should not be in this continent because uh -huh. it is a major cause of the problems uh, for the African continent. Right. Yes. Okay, so let's speak about people who are in these uh, uh, prone regions, regions prone to sesaflies. Uh, there is no treatment just yet. There is no prevention. So how can they prevent insect bites from the sesaflies? Uh, Michelle, there are several methods that we use for, uh, for actually killing mm -hmm. and uh, prevention. Prevention, it means you create barriers so that the insects don't cross. Mm -hmm. But this is normally normally a difficult endeavor for communities. It remains a government, uh, uh, it remains a government activity. Mm -hmm. uh, we have uh, activities that the communities participate on, like uh, spraying of the animals. When animals are sprayed with insecticides, they actually act as targets. When they go to graze, they actually kill the vectors. They mm -hmm. kill the sesaflies in the bush. You've heard of dipping. Dipping is just part of insecticide killing. Mm -hmm. We also have uh, the physical trapping. You actually have uh, scientific traps which uh, trap these insects and you can actually see them. We have artificial clothes which we call insecticide impregnated screens. Mm -hmm. These screens, you set them in certain standards in the bush and when the flies, uh, hit them, they pick the insecticide and they die. Scientifically, actually, you can test how many insects are being killed by that particular target mm -hmm. and see them uh, fall there. Right. But in a normal use, actually, you don't see the flies, but you, you can measure the density changing. And uh, we have uh, reclaimed uh, quite some areas in the country. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's the reason, actually, you don't see many outbreaks in, in Kenya now, mm -hmm. because we are eating it in small, small bits. You can even employ aerial spraying, like uh, the major national parks with the wild animal. You may not want human beings walking in the park. Mm -hmm. So you may actually use aerial spraying, which has been used elsewhere in, in Africa. Mm -hmm. And we have the biological method, which is a sterile insect technique. Mm -hmm. The males are sterilized, then released into the field to mate with the uh, wild females. Uh, and you know, says if flies only mate once. Mm -hmm. So once the female has mated with the sterile male, then it will not mate again. Right. That means you are wiping out the population. Mm -hmm. This is what was done in Zanzibar, which is free now and just focusing on productivity. Right. So there are several methods which can be integrated, including manipulating the manipulating the habitat mm -hmm. of the fly. Right. Yeah. So since its establishment in 2012, how far has Kenta come in terms of er eradicating both the insect and the disease? Yeah, being a young institution, we've had uh, 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 our successes and, of course, challenges, mm -hmm. which as a government uh, uh, we need to uh, look at to do more. Uh, you may remember sometimes in the past, uh, members of parliament used to say that Lambe Valley should be divided to the people who live around there because the government cannot remove the sense of mm -hmm. You don't hear that now. And if you go to that area now, people are focusing on uh, cropping sunflower, doing animals, and the animals actually look really healthy because we are working together with the communities to keep this problem out of the, the area. Mm -hmm. uh, if you go to KWS, you will see how their revenue is increasing. When you read about black rhinos being introduced into Ruma National Park, it's because the environment has been created for the, the rhinos to survive in that park. They mm -hmm. are very vulnerable to this, uh, to this disease. Right. So this is how we are impacting on the economy. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's one particular area in Eastern, in Bere, the Moya Game Reserve. Mm -hmm. That used to be a, a source of problems for the, the people who live around there. Mm -hmm. They were unable to keep dairy animals. They were unable to crop. And uh, whenever they were using uh, draft animals to open up land, they could use up to six because the animals are very weak. Mm -hmm. If you go there now, those people are busy importing, they are busy buying dairy animals from Kinyaga into Mbere, 
If you go there now, you will find large, large, large sacks of uh, grams of vegetables, which they are actually using and exporting to other counties. Mm -hmm. In other words, they are self-reliant. In fact, investors, NGOs are coming to invest in the area. We have uh, one notable one, the Thiba Farm, mm -hmm. is a, a church NGO, has invested into dairy production. They have large number of dairy animals. Uh, they have large number of trucks of farm now, which they are employing the locals to work on and producing milk and even exporting uh, very many other activities. I'm sure hotels are going to take you and start investing in that area mm -hmm. to attract more investment and mm -hmm. job creation in those areas. So the education is very important for the economy. It is very, very important in the economy and it is multi-sectoral. As I've mentioned, it is not just a livestock issue. Mm -hmm. It is affecting very many sectors mm -hmm. of Humans the economy. As well. Meaning even uh, implementation of the programs mm -hmm. is highly multi-sectoral, requiring effective coordination. Yeah, I mean, that being said, what are some of the challenges you've experienced so far? Well, uh, if, uh, Michelle, if a bee was here today, mm -hmm. you know that there's a bee right. because of the buzz. If a sassafly was in this room, you wouldn't know. Uh -huh. It's a silent killer. So sensitization is, is key. And you have to continuously sensitize both the levels of the population, uh, government officers, communities, technical and political, mm -hmm. so that they, they realize the importance of this monster mm -hmm. among the communities. The other challenge is that this... Uh, problem is a rural-based problem. Mm -hmm. Unlike HIV, which is only affecting human beings, this problem affects human beings, affects livestock, affects uh, uh, wildlife, but we do not know. Because in the towns, like in Nairobi, if you talk about sesame flies, uh, people would think maybe you're crazy. They don't know. But they the, don't know, the but the danger is, is uh -huh. Uh, in some areas, like with the climate change now, uh -huh. sesame flies can appear in central province around Nyeri now, which has no sesame fly, simply because of uh, climate change. Mm -hmm. The people do, in that area, they do not know how they would cope with that because they've, they've never had such a problem. And like you said, so it's it a will be a disaster. Killer, it can't be seen. Yes. Uh -huh. So we have to continuously survey even those areas which are, which are free. Mm -hmm. But even even it, as you speak of surveying, because you mentioned this is not a global problem, it's an African problem. Are there any African countries that have been successful in eradicating this that we can probably learn something from? Yes, actually the most inspiring is uh, the story of Botswana. Uh -huh. Botswana focused on eradication of sesame flies because of tourism. Uh -huh. But the sector that ended benefiting is the livestock, sector. This is why every time we are talking about Botswana having access to the European market. Uh -huh. You know, Kenya, we are still struggling to access the European market. Mm -hmm. Botswana used its own funds. There was no donor funding. There was a problem uh, getting donor funding. One thing that we need to realize that some of these uh, national parks mm -hmm. is, uh, is a resource that is considered... Uh, to be protected, not to be interfered with. So if you go to control sales of lies in those parks, some of uh, our development partners do not think it is the right thing because you're exposing the park maybe to invasion by human beings plus other things. But Botswana made that decision as a government, put in funds, national funds, mm -hmm. prioritized it, removed the sales of lies. Botswana is still free till today. They convinced their neighbor Namibia to do exactly the same, and Namibia did the same. Botswana and Namibia, because of a threat coming from Zambia, are now teaming up to help Zambia remove the problem. So it's something so that can be done. It is doable. Mm -hmm. It is doable. All right. All right. So all that uh, Kentec now needs is funds, of course, from the government, I believe. From the government and other development Stakeholders. partners. Uh -huh to remove this problem All because right. it is doable. All right. Yes. Thank you so much for speaking to us, Dr. Pamela Olet, CEO of Kentec, which is the Kenya Sese and Tira.
Tirapanosomiasis Eradication Council. A very interesting conversation there, Michael. Clearly, I don't have <laughs> sleeping sickness. Well, the thing is, um, <laughs> even that pronunciation, well, Tripanosomiasis. But it's anyway, really I just wanted to find out, does this sesa fly actually look like a fly or is it, does it, are there other distinctive features that make it look different? Or is it just a fly that has I that? I wish we could see a fly we on the screen. We did have a few pictures on the screen. It but is, it's, it's just like a fly. A fly. In fact, Any other fly? It's, the normal one is the size of a house fly. OK. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. Some great information right there. Thank you, Michelle and Gale, for getting us that information and ensuring that we stay healthy. And just before we go, I take a look at uh, the traffic. And I was watching this traffic as I was sitting here on the side. And it is really flowing. At some point, there was actually no traffic at all. But there you go. If you're driving into town, this is Kenyatta Avenue roundabout, and it is definitely flowing, so enjoy yourself. Otherwise, we'll have to wrap it up right there because of time. But do stay with us right here on KTN News. Michelle Ngele is coming back with World View, where she is going to be giving you a scope of what's happening around the world. Do have yourselves a wonderful day. God bless.